guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're here with my friend Daniel, Signature Performance. If you didn't recognize, we're back at my buddy Dean's place, SoCal Classic Car Storage. So this is one I've been looking forward to. You know, I saw it out at Grand National Roadster Show. Yep. Before we even talk about what year and all the build <clears> stuff, <throat> tell me the story that, I, that I've been waiting to hear. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's all based around my sobriety. Currently at about 11 and a half, almost 12 years, no fronts. When I was 17, 18, when I graduated, I inherited a C20, a 1970 C20 from my uncle. Uh, he unfortunately died of alcoholism at 33. My dad helped me build a new 350 for it, and I wanted a big lifted truck, right? And no two-wheel drive C20 lift kit, so I had a body lift, and I then went off on my journey, and through drugs and alcohol, I lost that truck. Got it. And so for me, it was always in the back of my mind that not that I owed it to him, but just I really would like to build that truck, right? So when I got to my eight, eight and a half years sober, I told my wife, hey, I think as a 10 year gift to myself, I would like the opportunity to build a C10. She had a surprise party for me on my nine years sober. Her and a couple of my employees, one of my best friends, Sean Worley, they were lying to me saying they had doctor's appointments and and these things and missing work and they were actually going and trying trucks and finding trucks. And so for my nine year sobriety, my wife surprised me with a, what was a 1970 GMC C15, original two-wheel drive, original short bed truck. Turned out the motor wasn't good and uh, I started popping around on some forums. Hey, is anybody, you know, what's guys doing for a cheap airbag? I was just gonna patina, drive up some US Mag 20s and have all a good the time. Day, right? Yeah. yeah. And then a guy messaged me, hey, I have this frame I started, but I didn't finish it. So three weeks in after having this, I had to call my wife and say, hey, I'm also bringing a frame home. <laughs> and we're about <laughs> to go all in on this truck. So my friend Sean and me and my wife uh, got to spend a lot of time in the garage building the frame from the get go. So here, that's what this, that's the foundation of this truck. Yes. It's a so full the, custom chassis then it under It is here? not. It's an original factory chassis. Got it. That has a Porter Built Extreme Level 3 cross member in the front. So it's got the cross member, the LS motor mounts, upper and lower arms, bag mounts, power steering in the front. And then it has their older four link in the back. Let's pop the hood, because sure. we're gonna get into all the things about it, but I always kind of like to start up here. Yeah, this is friggin' clean, dude. So it started with, uh, hey, we're just gonna put a 350 in it. Then it was like, no, 383. And then I was like, I'm probably not gonna drive it that much. I'd like something really reliable. I wanna go away from the carb. So we found a motor and trans, so it's a 4L60 and a 5.3 out of a 2002 Tahoe. And then when I got it, we just gutted it. Put CP pistons in it. It has all Texas speed internals, so springs. I didn't really wanna go for the moon, but I had it apart, so I wanted a cam. I still wanted that old sound if I was gonna yeah. have that newer reliability. Yeah. So it has a Texas speed cam in it. Everything is Holly on the uh, top. So we have a Holly sniper. The whole EFI system is Holly, Holly intake. We did custom valve covers with the Signature Performance logo and the and the pretty penny and the pretty penny yeah. because I felt that was important. Yeah. Did a custom intake because I still wanted that old school look. So what kind of power did did you end up making with it? So I did have it dyno tuned. It makes 392 mm -hmm. at the wheel, which for me, plenty. It's plenty. Yeah. If it's 65 on the sign, I'm probably going 62. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, everybody says I don't drive fast enough, and that's fine. As long as my stereo is good and I can hear my exhaust, yeah. I'm having a good time. Plenty of power, gets out of its own way, yeah. sounds faster than what it really is, which is cool. Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted reliability, is yeah. what I want. I wanted that modern hot rod look, and I felt like we were able to accomplish it. Oh, you nailed you know? it, dude. I mean, it's so nice to, gotta admit, with the with all the stuff available now for LS engines to be able to dress it up and make it not look like an LS, it's you know 100%. what I mean? They're not the prettiest engine. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, you know. just the CVF setup in the front with all the billet machine pulleys, and yeah. we did all the AN lines are all custom. All the brake lines are AN, except for we're hard lined. All the air lines are AN. 
you did this whole build in-house, right? We did everything except for the body work. Some of the fab work, we did some of the fab work in-house as well. Johnny Hammond from Hammond's Auto Body in Riverside, he paints a lot of the TMI cars, so okay. Johnny did a fantastic job. Somebody else started the fab work, as a lot of these builds do. I took the truck back and yeah. it went to its second and final resting place after we did all the bed fab work at Signature. How about the inner fenders? Are those, is that a custom piece or is those that? Those are slosh tubs. This is their newer extreme version. So it's designed for the 22. So 22 by eight and a half in the front and a 22 by 11 in the rear. So what do you run yeah. tire sizes then on these? Uh, 265, 30, 22 in the front and a 315, 25, 22 in the back. Nice. Big piece of meat back fun. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Building the wheels was a lot of fun. Evo 61 out of Huntington Beach. So is this they, a custom, like a one-off wheel for the truck? It is a custom one-off wheel. This is not the first set of wheels that was designed for this truck. This is the second. The first set went through copper four times and we could not get it right. Three and a half weeks before SEMA, they came over and uh, we built this wheel from scratch. So we did a textured black in the center because I wanted something to offset the paint. Yeah. It's a real copper lip copper bolts and then copper and black center gosh cabinet. man i gotta tell you dude it's like a i'm just another dude with an opinion my opinion means nothing <laughs> except for i'm a guy with a friggin opinion right but this is one of those colors in my opinion you could quickly overdo it you guys pulled the reins a little bit on this truck you it, know you it's over the top but yet you kept it somehow a bit subtle in my opinion we wanted something that somebody easily couldn't recreate we looked at and tried multiple powder coat options. We looked at chrome with a copper clear over top of it. I mean, we tried more than I would like to admit, just trying to figure out the color. And in the end, it came down to, we're gonna real copper plate it. Because so that's, that's, this, this, this is, is real, real copper plated and polished and then cleared so it won't change colors. The tough part is, all three of those processes have to be done in a very quick amount of time. Oh, really? The elements will change the copper like that, and there's not one location it can be done in. So getting it copper plated and polished, you then have to get it to the clear in a certain amount of time and hope that the guy who's painting it doesn't get any wrinkle in his paint. And so every piece on this truck has been done twice. There's not one piece See, that was like- as much time in the copper as you do for elements for, of the build. It was painful. Yeah. <laughs> It's painful, well, but worth it. It's a very elegant truck, you know, you. which is, yeah, hot rod, yeah, bagged and slammed and that whole drill, but like very elegant, you know, very class. The paint to go along with it was really important. We shot the bed side two or three times to get the right mix. It started a little bit more root beer-ish, which I really liked, but I still wanted the truck to look black because I felt if it was too root beer-ish with the copper, it was gonna be way too much. Yeah. It's so subtle that a lot of people don't notice it, but for yeah. me, it's one of my favorite parts of the truck. The whole black has copper flake in it. Yes. And it's, I mean, you really it, can't tell until you, the light hits you, it, it's you black. You really can't, yeah. And that's kind of what I love is like, when it was at SEMA under the lights, you could see it and people were like, Whoa, you know, didn't and it's like, notice that before. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, and I love yep. that. Yep. Because there yep. is so many C10s and there are there are so many beautifully well built C10s. Like how do you do something how do you just do it a little it? different? Truck's bitching. Thank All right, let's keep much. going with some of the okay. mechanical stuff. So yep. I see Willwood Master. Yep. I'm assuming Willwood brakes then on yep. it. Yep, it's Willwood's uh six piston in the front, 14 inch rotor. I wanted power booster, I considered hydro boost. The reality was looks were more important, not than the brakes, and I shouldn't say yeah. that to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here, man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> In the end, it came down to like, I want this firewall to be clean. Yeah. You know, with the flow of the whole truck, everything from the shape of the wheel wells, front and rear, both had to be round. They both had to have similar shape. Will would advise me, Daniel, you get plenty of brake up front to run a manual brake. Yeah. And uh, so that's what we did. Yeah. And so I went to the full Willwood forged spindle along with their whole front setup, just in time to build the wheels because the wheels were obviously built from scratch yeah. at the same time. 
So that with the Porter built front end definitely doesn't drive like a 1970 or 68 vehicle yeah. in any way. It doesn't have a sway bar in the front. You know, if I was tracking it, I might care. Yeah. But, you uh, built a cruiser. It, yeah, I built a cruiser. And I yeah. honestly, I never built this to show it. I built this to enjoy this for myself. It's funny too, because it's family. been showing a lot. It's getting a lot of attention. It's, yeah, I'm really thankful, you yeah. know, for the people that take the time to comment and send me messages and because it's something from my heart. Yeah. You know, it really, this truck means something to me. Yeah. It is my first ground up build as well. So to be in the TMI booth, I'm thankful to those guys. And then yeah. to be invited to be a part of the Barrett Jackson Cup, hand pick 50 cars. Big like, deal. It's a big it's deal. It's a big deal. Uh -huh. you know, no, I you're in heavy hitting there? company like, at the Barrett Cup, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's, that's that some was heavy cool. Company. And then Grand National Roadster Show. And then to be here with you, yeah. you know? That's uh, awesome, dude. Yeah, it's good. All right, let's keep going around this okay. thing because there's so many neat elements. What are these from, by the way? Jason Venata at Venata Fabrication takes a Ford Mustang mirror. That's what it is. And modifies it for the C10. So that's, that's, what it is, that's his mirror. Yeah. So the whole vision, just to kind of tie in some of these pieces for you, is I wanted something that looked more modern. Yeah. But still had that old classic feel. So I wanted smooth body lines, mm -hmm. the rain gutters, we molded all the way around the door and we tried to get rid of that lip. There's a, a body line that we continued through here. Yeah. The cab actually separates on these. So we welded that together. And then we did the smooth glass, the flush mount glass Fessler, which looks both fantastic. front and rear. The cowl obviously shaved, no windshield wipers. Yeah. So hopefully we don't get any rain today as we take this thing <laughs> off our cruise. <laughs> um, I did the one piece side glass power both left and right. Oh yeah, because usually you would have a wind wing. You would. You? We wired these directly into the Holly EFI dash, which I'll talk about that in a minute. Sure. So there's no window controls in the doors because I wanted it clean. And so you actually control the windows from the Holly EFI dash. All the door handles are shaved, obviously. Yeah. And then moving on to the bed. The wood again against the copper, it's... it's. So the fun <sighs> thing with this bed is I, I changed the way I wanted to do it probably four times. In the end, I still came back to my core, which was I wanted that modern, sleek, mm. but I wanted the original look as well. Mm. So I kept a stock header panel and did not modify the header panel. So when you look this way, it still has some of that classic, but then we molded and fabbed smooth sides along with the wheel tubs to give it a little bit of both world. God, that's um, really cool. The bed, I originally, I was gonna do painted airbrushed wood and I was gonna recess real pennies into the truck. And then I was like, ah, just clash with the wheels. And so I just said, let's do this OG wood. I just, but we cut our own wood. So all the spacing is exactly the same left to right. Cause a lot of the wood, they're different sizes in the middle. We anodized that black so we can put the gas through there. And my wife actually stained the wood herself. The taillights are also from Venata Fab. They're a brand new taillight made by Alumacraft. It's the shape of the old 67 to 72 taillight. Sepik converts it to one light. Oh, nice. And it's all LED. And then I wanted a working tailgate. Didn't want a handle. And I wanted a smoothie bumper to kind of keep it all smooth. So I yeah. have a working tailgate. Oh, bitching. And then we finished off with the pretty penny logo in the back. And that's slick. That's really cool. Did you reshape some of the bumper? To no, get no. That is a Cooper Restoration smoothie bumper out of the box. Really? Bolts right, right on. on. Well, <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> it's considered bolt on. Uh -oh. You know, one thing I didn't ask when we were talking about some of the mechanical elements, what air suspension are you using on here? Airlift 3P 3H system. Everything is mounted under the bed. So there's a five gallon tank, the two air compressors, Another one, because I see stickers on here and I'm glad I just saw the Magnaflow and it reminded me, I didn't ask you, the headers back. Yeah, so the headers are actually designed by Porterbilt as well. So to go people, with their to chassis. To go with their suspension. The exhaust is fabricated using Magnaflow parts. Mm -hmm. TMI, obviously, really thankful to those guys. And this is all a TMI interior. This is, this, right? yeah. So this is their newest seat. I wanted a double stitch pattern. They did not have one at the time. They were working on one. This is their newest pattern available. So it's a black leather with their distressed tan leather 
in the middle. The uh, center console goes up and down both this way. Oh, it yeah, also yeah. has a pouch it's here. More storage space. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I ain't getting paid a dime from TMI, but I got to be honest, I, I've seen a number of vehicles with TMI and what you get is the look of a one-off custom interior with a, a fraction of the cost of a one-off. Plus, like, they, there's something like a thousand options between color, type of material, stitching, da 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 that when you start to put together your interior that they offer. So uh, it's... When I got to go through that process, it was quite like, I don't <laughs> want to make the wrong choice here, cause, yeah. you know? But <laughs> Ross has been awesome, all those guys. So the one thing that a lot of people also miss on this truck is the dash. This dash is... I was is, just noticing, I, you know I got a thing for metal dashes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The next gift my wife got me was the Holly EFI dash. When we mocked it up in the 67 to 72 dash, which is real flat, it just looked funky. And so this dash is out of a 63 Suburban that we uh, modified and molded to fit in so I could still have that flat look of the dash. Orange County Hot Rods uh, helped us out with some of the fabrication on that piece as well. We carried the copper over obviously to the inside you can see, if you look here, these are what unfinished, clear-coated copper pieces start oh, turning, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We did these right before SEMA, the week before SEMA, and I never cleared them, so I get to redo those pieces, but everything, the headlight switch down here is copper. The gas and brake pedal, we bought two of those, disassembled them, copper-plated parts of them, and black the other so we could have not too much copper again, but it needed to be there. It's one of those I always laugh when, when I start to say, it's so simple, which usually means it's far from simple. <laughs> <laughs> the most simple looking things are so far from it. And I think that's what I really enjoyed about this build was just trying to do something just different enough to almost make people miss it. Yeah, this thing's just, it's really, really a clean, cool C10. C15? C10. Technically it's a GMC C15, yeah. technically, yep. Well, I don't know if we've missed anything on it. I'm sure there's pro probably later, later in the day you'll go, oh, I can't believe I left out this part. But if we're good on the overall talk about it, let's we'll take some time, put some cameras in, and we'll go it. roll it down the road. Yeah. Now, by the way, you guys, okay, now feel free to comment away because I know some of you are going to hit me hard on it. Yes, there are no seat belts in this one. <laughs> Gotta love Daniel for that one, man. <laughs> He took him out just for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, we're going to go for a drive, you guys. Is the no seat belt in here? Is it? because of a look that you were going for on your interior? No, it's simply because I just didn't get seat belts to put them in. Got it, okay. There's no other reason than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that was really intentional about the interior was to make sure that me, my wife, and my daughter could all ride together. Yeah. I think the car has been detailed more than I've driven it. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. And there's definitely a level of uncomfort by not having seat belts. Yeah, it's really funny, dude. I, I mean, prior to that accident, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a vehicle that has full harnesses, but we're doing like we did that day, just cruising. I mean, you know, our, the fastest we did that day was about 48, 50 miles an hour. We weren't all an ass, you know I mean? On Lake Forest here, the speed limit, I'm pretty sure is 45 miles an hour. Okay. And knowing that we're just doing our roller shots, I just can't tell you how many times I've gotten in a vehicle that has harnesses and, and I just put on the lap belt. If I know we're going to rip on it a little bit, of course I'm going to throw on the harnesses. Sure. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. I don't need full harnesses, sure. you know what I mean? But, right. a, but a shoulder strap gives me that extra little bit of security. Plus you've got miles on this, you're a builder, you know, it's, it's one of the things I think a lot of people don't know about that crash video is the guy that built the car, he wasn't a builder. He was a, he's, a, he's your atypical hobbyist Yeah. that overall did a really nice job on the car. There was just a few things that, you know, that he didn't. Isn't that interesting? That's like something people don't think about. It's like, okay, building it, great, but it's the final tweaks and tunes and changes. Somebody is risking their time in their life every time to figure out something is wrong, 
before the end user is actually using it. Totally, dude. That you know? last that last 10 to 15 percent, the vehicle's 100 percent built, but it's not 100 percent ready yet because it hasn't been sorted out. And I I don't care who the builder is, you need to get a few hundred miles on that vehicle yeah. at least 300 yeah. to 500, in my opinion, to start discovering like, oh, we need to adjust this, we need to this. You know, there's there's the tweaks. I tell you this much, dude. The my whopping five minutes of seat time in this. It drives really nice. That makes me really happy because I, mean, I feel the drives, same way. It drives really nice. It, it, it feels like what I expected it to feel like, a bagged vehicle that you get a little bit of the, da, 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 yeah. you know, it's a little stiff, right? right. But, but like steering on it feels real articulate. The manual brakes are doing exactly what I'm expecting them to do, you know? Yeah. And then power wise, I'm probably what, maybe quarter throttle. It's slowly accelerating. I don't know if I put my foot in it. This is a nice cruiser truck, dude. Yeah, it does exactly what I wanted it to do, yeah. which is go enjoy the truck with other enthusiasts and, you know, take in their builds and spend time with my wife and my family and probably get some more of that Creole food over there because that's real good. I missed the end spot at the last one. Did they do it in Long Beach they again? Did. Oh, they did. There's some good food over there, they isn't did. there, man? Oh, so good. That was the longest drive I've done in this truck yet. Was it really? Yeah. The stereo bangs in this thing. I didn't talk to you about the stereo earlier. Oh, we didn't talk about that. And no, unfortunately, and we can't play anything because no. it will get hit for copyright stuff. But uh, it's got a whole little competition stereo in here and it, it bangs. I'll bet it does. It bangs. This build was a lot of fun. I think, I think the one thing is the relationships of some really close friends that were able to be a part of this. Everything from my buddy Sean Worley being a part of finding the vehicle. And then my buddy JD, uh, who's the one who helped me get sober in the very beginning. Um, he's the one that did the fabrication on the bed. Got it. At Signature, he still works with me there. And um, my wife deserves a lot of credit, obviously. She was the stickler on the copper. There was a point where I was like, you know what? This is just not, this is not gonna work. She's like, well, we're not settling. We're gonna figure this We're gonna out. We're gonna figure it out. That's and cool that um, she's that in it with you, you know, that that she's willing to go the, you know, the full yeah, distance of it. Totally, she's amazing. You know, it's representative of my sobriety and like a gift, right? And, yeah. And yeah. Um, so it, it's, been, it's been really cool to be here with you and SEMA and Parrot Jackson Cup and, you know, TMI and uh, Good Guy Show coming up, just, yeah. You know, it's been yeah. amazing. And pretty truck, huh, man? It's not mine. I, I get to drive it. It's his. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one, you guys. That's the other thing, by the way. I love what customs do is customs, it generates that. People, totally. people can't help themselves but make a comment, you know? I think the part that I've noticed from feedback, because that's happened, yeah pretty much every time you drive it, right? Sure. But the people are not necessarily people that you might see at the cruise or at the car show. Right. They're just people you might run into at the grocery store. Normal folks, right? Normal folks that yep. can appreciate it. And that's like, all right, now, now we know we're making, you know. This thing, your choices that were made, I mean, the black against the copper being the, the crucial choice. And then to follow it through as much of a nightmare as it sounds like it was. I mean, you built something that's truly a, it, it, this thing's beautiful, dude. Thank you so much. to do that every once in a while I go like oh, okay it's there no, I'm good yeah I, I've said it a couple times in recent videos when we've shot we shot a beautiful Bel Air recently a 61 I think it was built by Timeless Customs really really wonderful build it's an LT1 engine in it not built in the slightest it's whatever right around 500 horsepower and I just love that car and I said how much like lately I'm finding myself liking cruisers more than I am the ones you gotta like, ok 
Okay, I'm mentally ready to get in this thing and deal <laughs> with what it's about to bring. funny it's it, like people don't understand that 400 horsepower is plenty to still have a great time <laughs> i mean it really and i know you're about maybe yeah. quarter throttle or something like that you know but like i can tell if you put your foot all the way in it this thing's yeah, gonna get up and move it's gonna break loose for oh. sure oh. well man what a bitchin truck after seeing this it shows seeing it cruising at the last quarantine cruise and now getting to shoot it, drive it, ride in it. Really, really dig this one. I think it's just set up to be such a bitchin' cruiser. And I love that not only did he build this to drive it, it's getting all the attention it's getting. And obviously that color combo is a knockout. So a big thanks for hanging and watching what we do here, you guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.